All of us think that God's promise has expired because of something we've done or somehow we forgot to renew it. And we think, I'm never going to get to that destination because the promise of God has expired. But I'm here to tell you today that with God, nothing is impossible. That what is impossible with man is possible with God. With God, nothing is impossible and all the promises of God are in Christ Jesus. Yes and Amen. I want to tell you on the other side of the screen, if God said it, God will do it. He who promised is faithful. No demon in hell, no person on earth can thwart the plan or the purpose of God for your life. God has an incredible plan, purpose, and destiny for you. And all the promises of God are in Christ Jesus. Yes and Amen. The currency of heaven is faith and miracles, and there are some unexpected dreams and things you've got in your heart that you think, is this ever going to happen? In fact, you've probably given up that it can ever happen. Scripture tells us that Sarah was past the age of childbearing. That means, honey, it had all. Like it was done. It was done. And I love that scripture reminds us, God wants to put it in there that I want you to know that I know that they were both old and advanced in years. Remember when the text said that they were old and advanced in years. So God saying I know they were old because what happens to us is we feel like we need to tell God as if he didn't know. Like God asks us to do something and we go, but God, I'm a woman. He's like, I had no idea. I had no idea. But God, I'm 50 years old. And God goes, wow, I must have missed a birthday somewhere. I just had no idea. But God, I live here. But God, I only have this level of education. I mean, we talk to God like he doesn't know. And we sing songs of worship like you're omniscient. You're omnipotent. You're omnipresent, but we don't really believe it because then we go, but God, didn't you know? So out on one side of our mouth we go, you're all knowing. And on the other side of our mouth we say, but God, I can't do this. And we put a whole lot of natural limitations on a supernatural God. So what we do is we measure what we're able to do by what we're able to do when God says, I want you to look up at what I'm able to do. So yes, Sarah and Abraham, I know that you're old. I know that you're advanced in years. I know that in the natural, your biological clock has stopped ticking. I know that we are a couple of millenniums away before Viagra is invented. So I know that this is going to happen. But the fact is that I'm able to do what no man can do. I'm able to do what can't be done scientifically or mathematically or be a reason intellectually because I'm God. And my ways are so much higher than your ways. My thoughts are so much higher than your thoughts. I don't need your permission to be God. I'm God all by myself. No one voted me out and no one is going to vote me out. I am God, and I create something out of nothing. It's what God does. It's a perk of his divinity. It's why you go, but I don't understand that. You don't need to understand that because God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond anything that we could ever ask, hope, or think. We think if I can't see it, taste it, touch it, smell it, feel it, or hear it, it doesn't exist. But God says, I operate in a whole different realm. I operate in the supernatural. Everything you can see, I made it. Everything you can smell, I made it. Nothing existed until I said it. It wasn't in existence until I spoke. And when I spoke, it became. 
So we need to trust a God that can make something out of nothing. This is what God was saying to Abraham and Sarah. He knew their bodies were old. He knew that they were past the age. I think God sometimes can't help himself. He waits until it's impossible. He just can't wait. He's like, I need to get it all out of the way until you get to a point where you utterly know if it's not God, it's never going to happen. It's got to be God. And the faith is the currency of heaven. And God wants us to stir up our faith. There is a fight for our faith on the earth. Paul says to Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. A lot of us were fighting a lot of unnecessary fights. How about we get off all the unnecessary fights and we fight one good fight, the eternal fight of faith. The enemy doesn't want your car. He doesn't drive. The enemy doesn't want your house. He couldn't be bothered. What he wants is your faith. And so what we have to do is continue to believe God and fight for faith. So what happened at this point? God says, I now know that this promise is impossible in the natural. There is no biological way that you're going to be able to conceive a child. You are way past the age of childbearing. So now that it's past the age, now that you've come to the counter, Sarah, you've given your passport and you've been told, expired, can't happen. So at that point, I want you to know that God can do the same thing for you. I don't know what happens. You've gotten a medical report and it says this diagnosis is terminal. It's incurable. There is no hope. I'm here to tell you that our God is a God who still heals today. That where man has said impossible, God can touch your body and bring healing. So a lot of us, we've become cynical or angry or frustrated, or we've become disappointed or disillusioned with the promise of God because it didn't happen within our time frame, because it didn't happen the way we thought it should happen. And we've confused the method with the outcome. A lot of us haven't seen the outcome because we've stepped out of the purpose of God because we thought, you know what? It's not going to happen because we tried to reason it. We tried to rationalize it. We tried to fix God's way in a box. And God says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are so much higher than your ways. My thoughts are so much higher than your thoughts. Your miracle is not going to come through other people or through your own gift or talent or ability. Your miracle is not going to come through your resources. Your miracle is not going to come through your circumstances. Your miracle is going to come from God himself. God alone is going to bring that miracle into your life because he is a miracle working God. Question for you, how amazed are people by your boldness? When they look at you, would they say, oh, undoubtedly, Beyond a shadow of a doubt, you are a disciple, a follower of Jesus. Or would they say, oh, I didn't even know you're Christian. Really? Me too. How amazed. There are innumerable ways the Holy Spirit may prompt you to be bold. You may just be in a conversation with somebody and suddenly you feel urged to ask them, do you mind if I pray for you? And you're not even comfortable praying out loud. But the next thing you know, you're calling heaven down and believing by faith for powers of God to touch this person right here in front of you. You may be in a meeting and there's something that's inappropriate and you just very lovingly and appropriately say, now let's not do that. We could be better than that. And you might be bold. You might be bold when everyone else is gossiping against someone and trash talking and you just don't participate or you walk away, or even bolder you say, come on, look, let's be better people than that. And you just step in. You might be bold by dressing modestly in a culture where everyone else does anything but dress modestly. You might be bold enough to say, you know what, I'm not hooking up like everybody else. I mean, that may be your thing, but I'm called to a different lifestyle. And you just declare it, I'm saving myself. 
And that's really, really bold. You might see someone that's hurting and say, hey, I'm coming to bring you to church this week. I'm not just inviting you, I'm bringing you. There's a difference between inviting and bringing. Some of you, you've been kind of inviting, but you start to bring. There are so many different ways that God might manifest himself through the power of the Holy Spirit when you have the courage to pray. Make me bold. What would happen if every day, just this week, you set an alarm on your phone before you go to class, before you go to work, before you go wherever? Whatever you do, you took a few moments and just said, God, make me bold today. May I have the faith to believe that you'll show up and do what only you can do. Make me bold. Peter and John, in the midst of a very real possible persecution, kept on preaching Jesus, kept on watching God do miracles. People continued to get saved. And the high priest, the religious leaders said, we're going to stop you. People will make fun of you. They'll laugh at you. They'll talk behind your back. You may not get invited to all the parties. You may be passed over for a promotion. People may not let their kids hang out with your kids or whatever. There is spiritual opposition. And the bottom line is this. If you're not ready to face opposition for your obedience to God, you're not ready to be used by God. It's a part of it. It's a dangerous prayer. It really is. Make me bold. Boldness often triggers spiritual opposition. When you live with bold faith, you'll often see the hand of God move miraculously in and around you. 